One, two, go. Okay, got it. Okay, we start. So, Assalamualaikum and a uh, very good day. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so, I'm uh, Dr. Wan Ashraf Wan Zaidi, uh, one of the neurologists, and um, I, call, I really call uh, thankful to you all for joining us this morning. And uh, we will have a webinar or CME today uh, from Neuro Emergency uh, Special Interest Group. Um, we have lots of enthusiastic uh, physicians here. And I, I think the, the, the topic that we discussed uh, almost uh, called each one of it is very, very beneficial. I hope uh, you can share, if not uh, uh, people uh, within the, the call with us today. Yeah? So, okay. Um, before we start, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Noor Hafiza, uh, our first speaker. Dr. Noor Hafiza uh, Chiani is uh, currently an emergency physician at Hospital Sultan Abdul Halim, Sungai Petani, Kedah. Uh, she's, uh, she was born in Ipoh, Pera, and settled down in Kedah now. She's married and blessed with a daughter. Alhamdulillah. She graduated from USM for her postgraduate and qualified as emergency medicine specialist in 2017. And her area of interest is definitely neuro neurology emergency and transfusion-related resuscitation in emergency uh, department. She's also a part-time lecturer for Ames University. So thank you, Dr. Hafiza, for uh, joining uh, for called uh, agreeing to, to deliver the webinar today. And I just immediately introduce also our esteemed speaker, Mr. Ragunat Kandasamy. He's the head of neurosurgery, clinical KL, and he, he did his undergraduate in UM and completed his postgraduate and qualified as neurosurgeon in U USM in 2012. He completed a number of fellowship programs. So he's uh, qual qual uh, qualified in few super speciality at world-renowned centers, JCMT Fellowship in Pituitary and Hypothalamic Neurosurgery, uh, Neurosurgery, Spine Fellowship in 2016 in Royal Adelaide, Australia, and Fellow of American College of Surgeons, uh, October 2021. And he uh, is a lecturer uh, at Department of Neurosciences USM and has been involved in many research and publication of journals and books in neurosurgical field. So uh, without further ado, today our topic, the first one is basically uh, uh, will be delivered by Dr. Nur Hafiza, approach towards headache. So your, the floor is yours, Dr. Hafiza. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ashraf, for your kind introduction. Uh, hi, assalamualaikum, very good morning to all the participants for the webinar today. So my topic today is about approach towards headache. Uh, this is my outline of my presentation. We started about the uh, definition, then followed by the classification, approach and evolution. Um, I think my lecture today is not uh, quite lengthy one, just about kind of revision. Maybe some direction of the classification and it takes about only 30 minutes. Okay, we start with the definition first. I think most of us at any time have experienced headache. Other than headache, uh, it's, it's terminology is interchangeable with kephalalgia and also kephalgia. So the definition of headache is any type of pain that located in the headache, in the head, or sometimes uh, it also include the head, face, and neck. I think most of us know that. Um, the headache has no known underlying causes result of other, another condition that cause traction or any inflammation of pain sensitive structures. Okay, um, how about the headache burden in Malaysia? And also, I think uh, most of the, it's one of the common um, complaint that present to the primary care and also the emergency department. So about the Malaysia, just I did a paper, I think it's a really old paper, however still significant to now. It's a, uh, the prevalence of migraine in Malaysia is about 9%. Uh, and also prevalence of tension tight is about 26.5%. And for 28.2% for another type of headache. And um, for the classification of headache, um, previously they, they used the ICHD3-2 and then followed by the ICHD D3 beta started in 2013. And the latest one, the classification is uh, ICHD3 uh, published in 2021. It classified the headache into three parts. 
first the primary headaches part two is about secondary headache and part three is about neuropathies and facial pain and other headaches so for the primary headaches we have migraine tension type headache trigeminal autonomic cephalgias the cluster headache is under the trigeminal autonomic cephalgias and other primary headaches disorder for the secondary headache we have uh, eight um, major causes I major groups um, first is about secondary to trauma attribute secondary to trauma or due to any vascular disorder or non-vascular disorder and also due to substance uh, withdrawal secondary to infection disorder of homeostasis or any disorder or to secondary to the cranium neck eyes ears nose sinuses teeth mouth or any facial or cervical structures or a headache attributed to second psychiatry disorder about the part three the neuropathy facial pain and other headache is a painful lesion of the canal nerve and other facial pain the giant cell arthritis falls in this category and other headache disorder it's not is it included in the primary and also secondary headaches okay this is a classical um, description of the primary headaches i think when you search in the google or any textbook it will describe the tension that it's about a band like pressing um, pressure uh, surrounding the heel unilateral uh, headache while the cluster headache uh, um, present with the retroorbital or periorbital sharp pain with associated with any autonomic symptoms such as tearfulness or any nasal congestion so this is the criteria of the primary headache we start with tension type headache first. The tension type headache can be categorized into two. It's either episodic or chronic. Episodic is uh, occur more than a, a 10 or more episode occurring less than a day, a month on average. For the chronic, it occur more than 15 days a month for three months on average. So it lasts, usually the tension type headache lasts about 30 minutes to seven days. And it must have two out of the following characteristics. Must be bilateral location, pressing or tightening, non-presenting quality, mild to moderate intensity, and not aggravated by routine physical activity such as walking or climbing of stairs. Must both of the following does not isolate no nausea or vomiting, and no more than one photophobia or phonophobia, and not attributed to another disorder means that it doesn't have other secondary causes. For the migraine, it must have at least five or more attacks fulfilling the criteria B to D. It means that in due of duration must be within four to seven to hours for each attack. It's either untreated or fully treated and must be more or two of following criteria. Must be unilateral location, pulsating quality, moderate to severe pain intensity, or aggravated or by causes avoidance of routine physical activity and must be have at least one or more of following during headaches, nausea and or vomiting, photophobia or phonophobia and not attributed to another disorder. For the cluster headache, a false under trigeminal autonomic cephalogels, it must be have more than four, five or more attacks fulfilling criteria B and D. Must be severe or very severe unilateral orbital, supraorbital, and or temporal pain that lasting within 15 to 3 hours when untreated. Either or both of the following must be have ipsilateral headache with congenital injection and or lacrimation, natural congestion and or rhinorrhea, eyelid edema, forehead and facial sweating, myosis and ptosis, sense of restlessness or agitation, and occur with frequency between one every other day or eight per day. And no matter counted by another ICHD3 diagnosis. Okay, what about patient does not have any headache before and present very severe headache? And I think when we what we afraid in the primary or uh, or ED visit when patient present to us with thunder clap headache. So what is a thunder clap headache? Well, by definition, thunder clap headache is a high intensity headache of abrupt onset. So, how abrupt is the onset? It's reaching the maximum intensity in the 
less than one minute. But some definition is insensible. Sometimes it refers the pain at the onset and um, it can last within, it takes about one minute to one hour. So other definition, they say that the severe of the headache with a peak intensity at the onset, as sudden as unexpected as a clap of thunder. So, if patient present to you with thunderclap headache, what a possible differential diagnosis? Actually, a lot of first, um, I think the terminology they describe in eighties. Uh, first, they describe for the pain that occur in patient with unblocked aneurysm, but there are few differential diagnoses may present also with a thunderclap headache, such as uh, it can be divided into vascular or non-vascular surgery, such as SAH, aneurysm or non-aneurysm causes, acute stroke, visible cerebral vascular constriction syndrome, cerebral venous thrombosis, artery dissection, either cardiac or vertebral artery, acute hypertensive crisis, uh, like posterior visible encephalitis syndrome, pituitary apoplexy, unblocked intracranial aneurysm, and non-vascular etiology that can present as thunderclap headache, such as colitis, infection, cephalic sinusitis, such as hypertension, cough, exertion, or sexual activity related to headache, or primary thunderclap headache is a diagnosis of exclusion. So from the, um, I think this uh, courtesy from, uh, from the Prof. Jonathan S. Lowe, the Harvard University Neurologist, said that within the thunderclap headache, about only 8% is subarachnoid hemorrhage, Another 8% is about reversible cerebral vascular condition syndrome. And most of the causes of the tentacle headache is benign causes. However, in due of significant overlap presentation, diagnostic testing is always indicated in patients with tentacle headache. Approach. So how we approach patients with headache? First, we need to take proper history and followed by physical examination. I think more we can make eighty percent of diagnosis with proper history taking. If you look back from the, the criteria of the primary headache, most of the criteria is episodic, and uh, we can get a uh, possible diagnosis by the uh, thorough history taking. And usually for the primary headache, if not in active attack, usually usually no positive sign. Most, if the uh, we can detect the physical with positive sign during it's possible that patient have secondary headache. So what the history that you need to ask? So I think most need we can use for any other chief complaint the uh, the pneumonia of Socrates, S O C R A T E S mean the site, onset, characteristic, radiation, any associated symptom, timing anticipating a living factor and also severity. So for the, if the site is unilateral from the history, maybe in a moment, can you be to migraine, cluster, it's occur bilateral, tension, it can be, uh, bilateral can be due to tension type headache, or the pain site is more at the neck or hospital with sign of meningism. Maybe portable off, meningitis or subarachnoid hemorrhage. For the risk and other hemorrhage sites like, like, like hemorrhagic stroke or, 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 and also ischemic stroke. For the subacute means that it is not really chronic, but it takes time, maybe due to mass. And for the chronic, means that it takes years, can be due to migraine or tension type headache. For the characteristic, pasta, migraine, dull, maybe mass, tightness, tension type headache, unsharp, to the neural gear. For radiation, sometimes the tension type headache may radiate to the all head area. If patient present with associated symptoms with uh, such as constitutional symptoms like a weight loss, vomiting, possible of malignancy, and if vision need to look, and if patient present with vision, we need to look for possible secondary causes. Timing, maybe maybe waking the most intense pain, possible secondary to any SOL or episodic. It may be too secondary to migraine or tension type headache. If have exacerbating or living factors, cough, sneezing, maybe due to secondary to mass, and living factors such as medication. However, if patient respond well to the medication given at the emergency department, doesn't exclude any secondary causes actually. 
and severity depends. If patient mild to moderate, most likely patient have tension to headache. But uh, there's a certain, uh, but the scale a small number of, of secondary causes. And if patient uh, present to you with severe headache, it can be to migraine or any other causes of secondary headache. This is the red flag syndrome of a uh, headache. Snook P10. I know um, some of you may read a Snook P4. This is the latest one. Uh, uh, actually, this not, uh, to, uh, you can get from the neurology uh, journal 2019. So the Snook, actually the mnemonic for the uh, red flag symptom, we start with the S. The first S is systemic symptom, means that including fever. For the N, neoplasm in history. The second N is about neurological deficit or N dysfunction. The O, onset, is a then abrupt, means that it's referred to tunnel gap headache. And second O is about the age, older age, more than 15 years old. Uh, the P, start the first P is about the pattern change, positional headache, precipitating by, by sneezing, coughing, and exercise. Popular edema, progressive headache with atypical presentation, headache in pregnancy or preparium, painful eye with autonomic features, post-traumatic onset of headache, pathology of the immune system such as HIV, and painkiller overuse or new drug at the onset of headache. Okay, this is the, um, um, the list of the red flag symptom and the possible secondary headache. Okay. Maybe the systemic symptom due to a uh, patient with increasing fever, it can be due to the infection or secondary to other non-vascular intracranial disorder, carcinoma of pure chromocytoma. If patient have underlying um, malignancy, no present in history, possible secondary to the brain mass. If patient have a deficit, it can be due to the vascular causes such as like stroke, hemorrhage or ischemic. Um, non secondary disorder, brain abscess or other infection. If the edit is onset is abrupt, we need to rule out for the any subarachnoid hemorrhage. Older age possible of any giant cell arthritis or other headache attributed secondary to cranial and cervical vascular disorder, neoplasia or non vascular intracranial disorder. The patient have pattern change possible of neoplasia. Positional headache intracranial hypertension or hypertension, precipitating by sneezing, posterior fossil malformation or any kairi malformation, papillo edema, it can be due to intracranial hypertension or any neoplasm, progressive headache, maybe neoplasm or other non-vascular or intravascular disorder, pregnancy, it can be due to um, thrombosis of the cerebral sinus, and, can, and also due to the any uh, possible of cranial or cervical vascular disorder. For the painful eye with autonomic features, maybe possible of any uh, pathology that happened in posterior fossa, jari or cavernous sinus, or possible of talosahan syndrome, or either other of stomach causes. Post traumatic headache, we need to rule out any intracranial bleed, such as subdural hematoma or other headaches. Or pathology, maybe postural, uh, possible opportunistic infection like toxoplasmosis or cerebral abscess and painkiller overuse. Maybe some medication can uh, cause headache. So how about the patient? What if patient have baseline headache? It, we need to further investigate if patient have if increase in frequency, increase in severity and unusual long duration and change in the quality of headache, or new or change aesthetic symptom, and not responding to the medication as in the past. So if patient uh, have underlying headache, means like an primary headache already on medication, and present to us with other type of headache, this kind of patient also warrant for further investigation. So, um, and don't forget about a special, special group, such as in children, Present with headache. I think children usually um, don't make signs, don't make symptoms. If they say that they have headache, means they have headache. Then so we need, cannot take it lightly. So possible of we're afraid or possible of infection or possible of neoplasm. In elderly, 
um, yes, neoplasm still first in line with just said arthritis or other uh, causes of uh, other causes secondary to vascular causes. In pregnancy, we know that in pregnancy is a thrombotic state. Um, means that patient have high risk to get the cerebral venous thrombosis and other causes we need to rule out the eclampsia, cyanide hemorrhage and also other possible intracranial hypertension. In the postpartum phase, yes, still still recovering, uh, still the body is trying to adapt with the uh, to back to pre-pregnancy state. Still, the body have a hyperthrombotic state. Post, uh, still have the risk to get the cerebral venous thrombosis, the press syndrome, the RCVS, the post dural uh, puncture headache, uh, secondary to the spinal, especially patient undergoing uh, ongoing seizures or any post um, having epidural. And if patient we have other underlying systemic causes. Then, such as patient with autoimmune disease or patient immunocompromised, we need to more vigilant to investigate why the causes of headache, and also uh, and 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 patient with HIV and malignancy, patient is immunocompromised as high risk to get the opportunistic infection, and also in the present with metastasis. Okay, what the what what a uh, physical examination. Stable patient, we can go head to toe examination to check for to rule out for any secondary causes. We start from the head, means that we can check for the conscious levels first, uh, the GCS, why, especially in trauma, hemorrhage, infection, as well. Patient may present with altered sensor, altered mental status. And the headache, we start the headache, we need to look out for any wound, for any swelling, or any laceration, means that patient have impact to the head. And we fail for any tenderness, means that one of the future diagnosis is giant cell arthritis. For eye, a lot of information we can get from the eye. We can look for the eye movement, the visual field, and possibly visual acuity and the pupil. Any any present of an isochoria means that an echo pupil, and we can proceed with the pandoscopy to look for any papillary edema. Here, there's still some information that related to headache. We can get from ear examination. Look for any discharge because patient present with uh, we call it uh, supportive orthotis media. If left untreated and patient become monocular, can lead to abscess or possible of CSF leak and bleeding. If possible of patient having intracranial hemorrhage or have basal skull fracture. Or face we look for any asymmetry or any kind of involvement of the facial nerve. So if I uh, have unit, if patient is asymmetry with with possible the apomotoral lesion punya uh, apomotoral lesion sign, be possible uh, patient having stroke or uh, SOL. For the limb, we, we need to check for the tone, power, reflex, and uh, to look for any hemiparesis, suggestive of stroke or SOL. For other examination, murmur. Mean the causes of uh, if patient have arrhythmia like atrial fibrillation, you know, uh, the risk of to get the thromboembolic stroke, cardioembolic stroke, and we check to abdomen for any muscle possible of having patient having metastasis secondary to the malignancy. And evaluation we can do for blood test. I think most of us will take the routine blood test, electrolytes, full blood count. But the full from the full blood count itself, you can give a lot of information. Uh, we can look for the total white cell if patient have any infections. Look at platelet level. If the platelet low can cause high risk of bleeding. And CRP and SR, acute phase protein. Uh, for the giant cell arthritis, it will be raised. Lumbar puncture, I think it's not routinely done in ED. But it has give a lot of information regarding causes of ED, especially such as infection, like uh, meningitis, meningoarthritis. And xanthochromia, I think it's more to the SAH that present late. Sometimes the CT is not, uh, if present late, sometimes the CT, the bleed is not sure of, but the evidence of xanthochromia for uh, patient uh, with SAH that present later. Neuroimaging, at how about decision to make the either CTH 
non contrast or contrast in in the emergency setting so what are the suggested tests if patient came to us with headache if patient present you with thunderclap headache the test is still we need to do the neuroimaging if patient have spoken logical sign yes neuroimaging this is suggested by the american family physician um, headache trigger by cough, lesion, yes, lumbar possible neuroimaging and lumbar puncture if no evidence of homicity. Headache, the change in personality, blood test, neuroimaging, lumbar puncture, neuroimaging. So you can see that most of the red flag symptom, the suggested test is either neuroimaging, lumbar puncture and also the blood test. So when to do CT? Um, we refer that this uh, when patient present to uh, either primary care or in emergency department. This is suggested by the American College of Emergency Physicians in 2008, um, which patient that required to do neuroimaging in ED. If patient present with headache and new abnormal finding in, in neurological examination such as focal deficit, altered sensorium and altered cognitive function, we, it suggested for us to do the emergent non-contrast head CT, mean that the plain CT. If patient present to you with new sudden onset of severe headache, still the emergent non-contrast CT. If patient present to you with his, uh, patient immunocrompoma such as HIV positive, present with new type of headache, still suggested of emergent non-contrast head CT. Patient with age more than 50 with no headache but no with normal neurological examination still recommend for urgent non-contrast head CT. Okay, this is suggested by the American College of Radiology for neuroimaging patient with headache. Still for headache immunocompromised also suggested for the uh, but suggested for MRI without any contrast media. For headache patient older than 60 years, if severe headache in pregnancy with the session, then it suggests for the CTA head or neck, or MRI of the head with or without contrast media, or MRI of the head and neck. So the onset of severe headache suggests for CT of the head without contrast media. So I think limitation of the availability of MRI in our country and due to the longer duration, I think the CT head without contrast media is the choice for emergent uh, irradiate imaging for patient present with headache with red flag syndrome. Okay, how about the other, maybe, okay, other than CT, what else can he, uh, help us uh, in order to make decision regarding imaging? So, um, if patient, this, uh, some, what we, uh, I think it's about, um, it's a recommendation by the American College of Physicians, 2019, if patient present to ED with acute headache, is any any restriction strategy that reliably and define the need for emergent neuroimaging, we can use the Ottawa Subrunner H rule as a decision rule because it has high sensitivity to rule out SCH but low sensitivity to rule in the SCH. Okay, still uh, it's recommended. If patient uh, in adult ED patient treated with acute primary headache with non opioid preferred by opioid medication, they are suggested is use the non-opioid medication to treat uh, in the treatment of acute primary headache in emergency patient. How about the adult headache presenting with acute headache? Does a normal non-contrast head CT scan within six hours onset need for further the actual workout of SH? I think if the CT to be done within six hours uh, in ED, acute onset headache, it, it can root uh, it can rule out the non-traumatic SAH. In the ED patient who still consider risk of SAH with negative non-contrast CT, 
the city A in the head is effective at lumbar puncture. They say that performing lumbar puncture or city A to safely rule out SSH in adult in the patient who are still considered to be risk of SSH after negative non-contrast HCT result. Okay, uh, I think uh, in this condition, maybe need to share decision making with other um, primary team uh, to best monitor for weighing the potential for post-positive imaging and the pro and cons of step with lumbar puncture. So what is Ottawa SAH rule? I think it is uh, introduced by the uh, Canadian. Okay, it's about uh, apa, doing the uh, apa, uh, we need uh, this A2 rule. Uh, it's good to rule uh, to rule out the SAH. It has almost 100% of sensitivity. The Ottawa SAH rule need require on investigation if patient have one or more finding present, symptom of neck stiffness of pain, age more than 40, witness loss of consciousness, onset during exertion, thunder clap headache, and limited neck flexion on examination. So this uh, rule can be applied for patient with more than 15 years old, which for severe non-traumatic headache. It's, you cannot use this rule for patient with, with have previous aneurysm, SH or brain tumor of history of similar headaches. So, um, prospect, it was done, uh, it's a prospective study, uh, done multi it's a prospective multi-center cohort study that was done in uh, Canada uh, and it done in emergency department in Sid University Hospital from 2019 to 2014 and it was published in 2017 and only intended for entering patient with SAH only and does not exclude other type of headache. It has sensitivity of 94 to 100% and but it's very low sense specificity, only 13.6%. But we need to remember not uh, for there's a certain condition that can be missed by CT, uh, by pain CT, such as that, like the section, aneurysm, atrovoidness malformation, especially the non contrast CT. Uh, if patient came early with cerebral venous thrombosis, ischemic stroke, or came later, especially in subarachnoid hemorrhage, intracerebral hemorrhage, uh, such as vascularity, RCVS, neoplasm, such as posterior fossa, acoustic neuroma, pituitary tumors, and metathesis. And high and low intracranial pressure syndrome, such as athletic syndrome, KRD1, with spinal junction abnormalities, subdural hematoma, meningeal carcinomatosis, infection, GCA, and idiopathic hypertrophic apache meningitis. So, not, uh, that's, even though we post it with neuroimaging like non contrast CT, still there are possible um, cases that we can miss. So, how about the treatment? For stable patient, our target is to relieve the patient pain. And they suggest for the primary headache, we need to give a non opioid medication. For primary versus can, but uh, we cannot rely uh, the primary, uh, we, we cannot um, separate the primary and secondary causes based on the response to energetic therapy. Okay. Um, I think that's all my latest. Um, we start, maybe we can have some, I have three cases to discuss. Um, I have, um, uh, these three cases actually is a real patient uh, that I encounter within this week. First cases, 49 years old lady, underlying retroviral disease. Uh, complaint of headache for three days with no other suspected symptom. Can anyone and um, can anyone get any post of city? Any uh, anyone to want to try? Does this patient uh, require? Ima apa, uh, neuroimaging, ima emergent in emergency department at the first place. 
Yes. Yes, why? Patient has RVD, immunocompromised. And then patient have headache. Previously, patient don't have any headache. Okay. Uh, any policy finding from this city? Good morning, doctor. Just some hypodense uh, in the right occipital region, but may need MRI. And then there's some in the ganglia, some suspicious lesion, the yes. right vessel ganglia. But uh, we may need mm -hmm. MRI to look for, because MRI is more sensitive to look for in and see lesion. Thank you. Oh, oh thank you, Doctor. Yes, there's a possible there. Hospital, there's also there's a finding in the, uh, in, I think, motor thalamus. There's an old infarct there. And I think for this, for further imaging. Okay, this is case two. Also, my patient. Um, 72 four years old lady, underlying my my low dyspastic syndrome, presented with headache and giddiness for two days with left side body weakness. In this patient, does patient required for emergency CT? Yes. Yes. Why? That's not CH. Yeah. Okay, and then patient is old age, underlying my dyspastic syndrome, and as a new onset of headache, and patient also have focal neurological signs. So this patient actually have bleed at the frontal uh, intraperitoneal bleed at the frontal lobe. Uh, this patient actually have bleed secondary to due to underlying muscular syndrome. Patient have severe thrombocytopenia. Patient has spontaneous bleed in the. Uh, I have spontaneous intracerebral hemorrhage. Okay, this the the case that's really it's very very i don't think this case it is a late in this case okay patient seven years old complaint of headache for past two years he still also admission twice no imaging done came with worsening headache and facial asymmetry for one month actually uh this patient present uh live in another state came to uh Petani to stay with the, uh, her aunt, just came back from her day and mother noted that uh, he walked unsteadily and the aunt, the aunt actually a staff nurse and noted that his face is uh, noted the facial asymmetry. So in this case, is it facial warrant for emergency? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely yes. Actually, it's quite delayed diagnosis really for this patient. Um, uh, 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 and then, uh, anyone to guess the city? Anyone to uh, state the positive finding from this city? I can see a very obvious misline shift with um, left uh, hypodensity on yeah, left uh, periventricular hypodensity. Okay. Then this looks like a mess. Then I mean, not sure. Pushing, it's, it's causing the midline shift, most probably. And I, I can see the ventricles, obviously. So it should be a mess there. Thank you. Okay. Yes, this patient definitely have a mess still under investigation. I think this is already referred to the neuro neuro center in Asia, in Australia. Yeah. Okay. Um. Actually, I open for any question. Thank you, Dr. Nafiza. Uh, called excellent presentation and sharing. So, um, yeah, uh, we can unshare the screen now. My face is empty. <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, before we go to the second talk, better we discuss uh, about yeah. the, your, your first talk first. So, um, it's actually not really a easy task to, to, to share about approach to headache because of even among neurologists, we call it headache. It's a headache to us. So <laughs> uh, uh, just to share a bit, my perspective is when you have a headache patient, you need to really spend time because of history and physical examination, really the cornerstone of uh, uh, called achieving a diagnosis. You need to spend time with this patient uh, uh, very nicely called presented by Dr. Nohafiza just now. Uh, there's 
some of the things that really, really you don't want to miss, despite the uh, called the frequency or the, the prevalence is very is low. It's not very low, but if you miss it, then it will be related to a fatal outcome. So I'm sure uh, later Mr. Ragunas also will share a few of yeah. It cannot it cannot be avoided uh, when we talk about ICH later on. So um, if I, I think we go to the question by the audience first. I have a few questions, uh, but uh, yeah, so Dr. Hafiza, maybe you can uh, share with us. Dr. Sugen here asked about, uh, can I know approach uh, of uh, yeah, uh, your practice on occipital migraine? I think uh, from the oster, um, actually I never counter about regarding the oster migraine. Usually migraine present to us uh, in... But uh, in ED setting, usually you can with typical one, the unilateral, uh, parsatile nature. If patient presented with hospital headache to us, I think we need to rule out any other secondary causes first before we conclude it's a primary headache. I think maybe, uh, uh, I think there's a neurologist here. Maybe you can share. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Aviza. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's a very good question, and I call, uh, we can we can discuss a bit. So uh, as what you have illustrated before, um, so basically uh, before you go to the occipital migraine, obviously you already go through all the uh, called the the necessary. So and now you decided that this is a primary headache, and it originated from uh, from the occipital. I think um, uh, Dr. Sugen must uh, um, basically meant, um, wanted to ask when it re really sounds like uh, occipital in origin, for example, the patient had aura and specifically is related to the occipital. Usually they have a bit of like um, visual aura. So, and uh, it sounds like coming from, from that cortex. So uh, with that, I think uh, the, the approach is all the same. And, uh, but the, the some, but there's a few publication about when you really have a uh, aura, maybe a trip time's not really advisable, uh, depending on what, what kind of uh, aura that you have. So is it a positive aura or is it a negative aura? A negative aura is more of like loss of vision, weakness. Mm. Uh, so so uh, but really that, that is not a class one evidence. Uh, still we need more research on that. So trip times uh, is associated with vasoconstriction and uh, it may be related to, to a more of a exacerbation of the symptom. So that, that may be your question. So again, maybe you want to also ask uh, personally? Uh, morning, Doctor. Uh, yeah, I now understand about it because recently I, I encountered a case uh, like about a few months ago with Dr. Shroff. We had an occipital migraine, remember? He had a uh, loss of vision uh, on the right, the left side, and he had some cranial nerve uh, involvement. But uh, you read the CTA, there was no uh, uh, cerebrovenous thrombosis. So we, after that, he recovered, actually. We were only giving analgesic for him. So that's why I'm wondering whether any medication to be added to this kind of patients, except Correct. for treatments. Correct. So yeah, if, if it's with a cranial neuropathy, uh, obviously the, the CT scan, uh, this again is basically uh, something that we do because of accessible immediately. Uh, we do uh, CT contrast or CTA to make sure there's no aneurysm. Um, but uh, uh, MRI, I'm sure we have discussed this. So hopefully we try to get it. Uh, if uh, the patient, uh, obviously again in Malaysia, it's about uh, the coverage. Can? So the patient can go for it or not. Uh, hopefully we can, we can arrange for that. Uh, other things that uh, may be related to uh, the approach of this patient, uh, I think it's in the, uh, the call presentation just now. You, you see that, uh, the treatment later on uh, is actually very, very cheap uh, if for migraine, uh, uh, but uh, you don't want to give the reliever too frequently, but the, we need to really help the patient because of uh, headache can really be debilitating. I, I remember talking to uh, a headache neurologist uh, because of during that time, few of the young neurologists, including me, was like, yes, a headache is a headache to, to us and sometimes it's functional. So maybe I just want to ask us a question to Tavisa. You are in an emergency department, right? Yes. How often you see your colleagues or your junior colleagues? Often, I think for us, when we become older, then we become more careful. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but uh, 
they, they presented with headache and how frequent among us, um, among the phys uh, healthcare professionals, we think it's a functional headache, uh, specifically it's like what, what, la? and what not, not MC again. <laughs> so, so what, 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 what are you, you're sharing about your approach? Actually, yeah. um, uh, it depends. Um, actually, if patient present to us in the first presentation with acute headache, usually we need to investigate for the second headache. But if have multiple visit, uh, of multiple visit, and we already do some referral to any other center. And then we also do the uh, we already investigate with radio imaging and with negative findings, so this is possible of the functional headache. But at ED itself, at the first place, usually we don't want to make any uh, diagnosis or any diagnosis of exclusion. Why? Because we don't want to miss any potential life threatening causes. Okay, uh, that's why. And if patient uh, presented uh, have multiple visit and multiple investigation have been done and still with negative finding, then maybe this kind of case, we need to be evaluated by the, uh, I think referral to the medical part because we don't have any neurology here. Re refer to medical and also referral to neurology to exclude for any other potential causes of headache before we want to label it as a functional headache. I think in this, I think usually uh, in this how kind often, of patient, I often. How I often think, do you, you think our, our our younger colleagues at least, uh, we put the, the, the fault on them. So <laughs> younger they, colleague, they how often? Really actually, uh, yeah. if, because uh, most of the time, uh, headache patient, uh, most of the patient uh, present with headache, uh, present to us in, in green zone actually. Green zone means that it's a very patient with very stable patient and doesn't have any other uh, alarming, alarming symptom that need to do imaging. First, I think, First evaluation, I think almost every day we can see this type of patient because it's one of the common uh, chief complaint that present to ED. Um, how often that uh, I think uh, often I think almost every day that we look uh, we encounter this patient uh, this kind of patient. dropping. Patient. Ah, okay. However, we spoke conclusion uh, regarding the functional about the functional headache because i yeah. think uh but the i think that by junior mo yes they still uh easily to diagnose the functional headache before they think of second headache because i, I have encountered few patients that they miss lah, such as sah and also stroke lah, okay yeah. uh, uh stroke especially the the cerebral stroke actually Mm. Correct. So see. yeah. So we don't have any other questions, then. Uh, Dr. Ada, ada, oh, sorry, Dr. Villa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, yeah. I just wanted to add on uh, about uh, uh, the functional headache. I think because at ED, can we are trained to look for the. Um, we yes. try to think about the functional part because uh, the problem is yes. uh, if let's say we refer, we do not follow up our patients unless kalau tiba-tiba kita yes. ada neuro institute lah, maybe maybe it's different <laughs> lah kot kan <laughs> we can follow up our patients but the, the thing is uh, uh, in, in overseas they use all this uh, macam you know they have this chiropractic and everything so they can follow up to see what's the outcome even they even uh, uh, suggest patient to go for macam apa traditional acupuncture massage and so forth so uh, at ED I think it's a bit difficult can visa to make such a decision because we do not want people to think about uh, functional headache at first so um, and another thing uh, yeah I think the most important part uh, that we need to disseminate to uh, um, apa tu, uh, everyone is uh, if the patient uh, has a resolution of headache by giving analgesia, we should not think that this is a benign cause of headache. There is no evidence space to that. And potentially it can lead to, um, up to more sinister diagnosis. So we have had a patient that comes in with, uh, uh, you know, patient comes in with a headache, then we give analgesia, resolve, discharge, then come in with a non-traumatic SAH rupture. So uh, that's why it is a uh, potentially uh, apa tu, kira time bomb lah if we follow that one. We need to treat headache as what Visa has presented. So I have two questions here. Um, we know that um, uh, in headache patients, and uh, we should not use uh, opiate for a long time. It's not preferable as our first line. So how about a patient that has um, um, contraindication towards NSAIDs? For example, maybe patient is allergic to NSAIDs or have some renal impairment. 
So, uh, what do you think the first line of uh, uh, analgesia that can be considered for the patient since uh, we don't really prefer opioids? Hmm. What else we can wait? Okay, we have in medicine, other than also opioids. Yeah, you can get the the paracetamol actually. <laughs> Center have all the ergotamine available in ED uh, for to uh, for the migraine attack. So it's it quite a limitation for us to give us uh, energy share in the medicine department. I think maybe later we have neurology that can suggest to put yeah. some drugs, other drugs, uh, yeah. non opioid to be available in the emergency department. Yeah, so, how about yeah. Amy, Amy uh, if you know that it is I'm a family headache? Yeah, correct. correct. Uh, uh, called the the. The thing is, if you think it's uh, the primary headache, for example, related to migraine, for example. So um, I think, yeah, uh, as when I was a, a trainee uh, in the first year, we had the luxury to talk to one of the neurologists uh, from the state. And the, the medication is simple, as I mentioned just now, it's very, very cheap. So ibuprofen. <laughs> so ibuprofen is simple as that. So, uh, but majority of us feel like, ah, oh, okay, headache come emergency department, maybe we need to give something stronger. Mm -hmm. But just to, to share with you another perspective, uh, although it's not really, it's not really clear cut in terms of the pathophysiology of vasodilatation that happened at the meninges related to the, to the headache, uh, throbbing headache. So, but uh, it is quite something relevant. Sometimes it's quite a, a good test for us to do. It's basically, if it's really a migraine, so then uh, when I give uh, tramadol, for example, or even morphine, uh, if they didn't get the side effect of drowsiness, they didn't go to sleep, what will they suffer? They will suffer exacerbation of the headache. Mm. So, yeah, so it's, it's quite clear in certain patients. It's not, it's not all patients, but if you get that, so I, I think that it's quite clear that uh, yeah, called uh, opioids is not your primary uh, reliever uh, when they arrive. So uh, sometimes, yeah, they're very fortunate to respond to, to paracetamol, for example, you're talking to one. So I'm one of the migraine patient that really responds to paracetamol by 50%. So, so basically, yeah, uh, don't, don't be the call, uh, yeah, don't be reluctant to, to, to call give paracetamol. <laughs> I would say something like that, as simple as the basic one. But I, I think, yeah, as Dr. Hafiza shared, the Nashina mentioned just now, we don't want to miss something sinister. Uh, we don't want to delay the diagnosis as the, the child just now. I think that's sad. So if, for example, the child presented to us early, uh, it, it, something that's avoidable, so then we can have a colleague uh, from neurosurgery uh, to, to really help us early. So I think, yeah, that's one of the things. Uh, I think we have another, maybe one question, Bule? Bila, I think you have a question, yeah. I just want to add on, add on the Dashraf. Uh, mm. We recently have encountered a patient who presented with the occipital headache without any involvement of the cranial nerve. By getting a detailed history, we managed to get the patient was actually it's because of a cervicogenic headache. Mm -hmm. The neurogenic headache, which is falsely mm -hmm. we've been treated repeatedly for a migraine headache. Correct. So a good history taking still plays a role when it comes to a headache. So as I presented earlier, abrupt onset, specific age group, and specific cranial nerve involvement is important for us to deal further. So this patient actually had a whiplash injury previously, which has a which has a laxity of the ligament, which leads to a, a chronic headache for the patient. Mm. So that's what I want to add on. Yeah. Okay. So definitely, I think uh, again and again uh, for each topics. Uh, the basic of being a doctor, I think if we have the young doctor or medical students, I've invited a few, um, it's all about history taking and physical examination. First, Great. then we go with all the knowledge that Dr. Hafiza have shared and think we can have a look again. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, Dr. Ish, you raise your hand. So last question, because of Dr. Ish, we must entertain the question. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just thinking, um, if undifferentiated acute headache uh, with severe pain score, uh, is it still wrong to uh, blindly use uh, opioids in managing the condition? Undifferentiated acute severe, it's not chronic headache. Correct. So, uh, uh, Dr. Hafiza, you want to comment first? Uh, uh, you're breaking, Dr. Um, it's Actually, for, um, uh, yes, I think, 
in severe pain if we follow by the pain protocol still we can i i consider to give opioid reaction even though it's not suggested to give in acute headache because uh, first of all we need to treat the patient pain first before because uh, pain is troublesome other than can cause uh, either than uh, other than it's very troublesome sometimes it can lead to other it can cause a lot of complication due to the severe pain itself so i think we need to give pain relief to patient if we don't have any choice i think yes we can consider opioid in severe pain however uh, it's a case to case basis if not we can use for all patients does uh there's any any other one, uh, want to give any input regarding yeah. the issue uh, i totally agree with the hafiza excellent uh, point there so uh -huh. i think again uh, based on your diagnosis and i'm sure dr isha we are we're not going to give it blindly so uh, that's the reason because of we want to really help the patient and we know the accessibility to imaging uh, is not similar to all of us here. Um, so uh, I think case to case basis and depending on your diagnosis, uh, if you think a patient uh, is affected by the pain, obviously go step by step and uh, call obviously emergency department, the opioids can come very early. It's not wrong uh, to, to give it, uh, just uh, it's sort of like in a, in a significant percentage, you can see if it, they are really migraine, the the the, the continuation of something with opioids based like tramadol because of obviously that's the oral version will not be as helpful as even as simple as as a uh, naproxen or uh, ibuprofen just now um i i think yeah so uh, in the severe headache that's that's uh, that's really really acceptable to go to opioids yeah so thank you dr Visa. uh thank you uh, everyone for the interactive uh, uh, call question just now so, uh, okay, we, Ashraf, Ashraf, yeah. eh? let me just stop recording for a while to, uh, to continue with the next one. Yeah.